Okay, I was uh, saving this for the uh, fourth edition of my book, but everybody loves fascinating little uh, tricks that they've never seen or heard of before. Now, what I'm about to tell you right now, I've got a, I don't like to get it too close to my brain anyway, a, <laughs> a two by two by one inch neodymium iron boron magnet. It'll also work with like a three quarter inch cube. It needs to be of a sufficient size. What I'm about to tell you seems really, really crazy, but it's actually extremely logical. What if I were to tell you, now we know, of course our bodies are mostly made up of water. Water has certain magnetic properties. It's diamagnetic. We know that uh, our bodies are full of blood. And in our blood there is iron. And iron is, um, oddly enough, ferromagnetic. What if I were to tell you something totally crazy and uh, I've tested this over and over and over and over and over again, blind tested. Because I have a lot of these little magnets, by the way, the 2x2x1 two by two by inches. That you can taste magnetism. In other words, you're able to taste without actually touching or licking the magnet. I mean, you don't actually have to make physical contact with the magnet. But you're actually able to determine by getting the magnet very, very close to your tongue, which side or which pole you have very very close to your tongue. The reason for this is simple. I've made a lot of videos um, showing how seed growth is radically affected by using different poles. Rawls and Davis discovered that decades ago. They've written a few books about it. It affects like animal growth. They experimented with worms, chickens, yada yada yada. I've done a lot of seed experiments. People can replicate it. I've made a lot of videos on seed experiments. The reason for that is there's a phase shift on a magnet at a ratio of 1 to 5. 1 over the North Pole, so we have a rarefaction on the North Pole, and we have a compression on the South Pole at a rate of 5. So we have a ratio of 1 to 5, which is almost a ratio of 1 to 2. Not really, but kind of close. So you're actually able to taste this. You're not actually tasting anything. What you do is you stick your tongue out, Okay? This sounds crazy, but it's perfectly logical, and this does work. But first, you're going to have to identify the difference. So first, you're going to have to also, while you do this, hold your nose so you're not actually breathing on your tongue while you have it sticking out. Now, I'm about to make myself look like a fool, but this is an experiment that I've already done a bazillion times, and I'm writing about in the fourth edition of my free book, Uncovering the Missing Secrets of Magnetism, that yes, you could actually taste magnetism without actually touching or tasting the magnet. I don't recommend anybody licking a magnet. <laughs> For obvious reasons, they're usually chrome-plated or nickel-plated, so I don't want you actually tasting physically something. Just like that. Very, very close to your tongue. Then flip it over. You'll recognize a difference. Okay. Now the closest thing I could actually compare this to is that the North Pole tastes very, very mildly. And by taste, I mean relative. We're talking about fields here. I'm not actually making physical contact with my tongue. The North Pole tastes very, very mildly as if you were to take a, an old penny. It's, in, it's Usually children have done this. It's like stick a penny on your tongue. It's like, ah, has that nasty sort of alkaline taste to it. And the South Pole tastes like, remember, you have to hold your nose so you don't breathe out and actually influence. While well, you actually have your tongue sticking out and you're placing the magnet, hold your breath, okay, so you're not actually blowing air on your tongue and affecting the results. The South Pole tastes kind of like you just stepped outside and you stuck your tongue out in the slightly cool air. Except with a variation. It's really hard to explain. The North Pole is kind of easy to explain, like a, sticking a penny in your mouth, it's like, ah, you know, anybody ever licked a copper penny? It's not like that, but it is like that, except much, much more sort of mild. And by doing this, you're able to identify which pole is which. And once you've done that in your brain, by doing the test and flipping, it's like, okay, I recognize the difference. If someone blindfolds you and hands you a powerful magnet, it needs to be a powerful magnet, not a little bitty magnet, but a powerful magnet. You will be able to identify, and we gotta hold your nose so you're not breathing under your tongue. You will be able to identify which pole of the magnet is being placed and run across your tongue. Not literally touching it, but very, very, very close. As close as you can get without touching, okay? Not pseudoscience, it's a fact, you know? Human body, blood, 
iron, water. The entire universe is governed by two things, force and motion, inertia and acceleration. It's governed by magnetism. 100% of the visible universe. And the inner atomic volume of every atom is magnetism only. Actually, it's magnetodielectricity, but the volume of every atom is magnetism. The air in the balloon, if you will, of the entire visible universe, from atomic, from macro to micro, is magnetism, the big M. Okay? So that is a super neat trick that you can teach yourself how to do. And no one else has ever talked about this in the world before. Ever. Ever, ever, ever. And it's the first video like it. And I guarantee you that it works. Absolutely, it does work. Okay? Thanks for watching. If you like this super awesome trick, you could always leave a donation in the link below. Or a drop a buck. Just like it. Try it out for yourself, okay? But don't physically lick the magnet because it was chrome plated. And chromium is not good for you. Don't actually physically lick the magnet. Okay? Bye. <laughs>